Hi, everybody, and welcome to SA Rugby Magazine. I am Kevin Ferguson. I've got Scott Gibbs with me. Scotty, how are you, man? Yeah, good. Good. Should we do a little post-mortem? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> For 70 minutes of that match, I was like, Scotty does know. Scotty knows something. And to me, there was, you know, only one, well, there was one team in it that we're going to win. Uh, and then the, the box did what the All Blacks used to do, uh, and turned it up a gear, um, 14 unanswered points, and uh, Bob's your uncle. Yeah. No, what a great test match. What a great test match. You know, befitting of both of these countries, you yeah. know, we, we come to expect the highest quality of, you know, engagement, uh, skill level, the ferocity. You know, it had everything. Um, and yes, the, the, the All Blacks were dialed in. Yeah, you know, they, I... did, they, they, they did. They did r really well in the first half, just with, you know, the amount of possession, how quick the ball was being transferred. You know, they, they really stretched the, um, the box, yeah. For sure. I mean, when, when I look at the player ratings, um, there isn't an All Black that's under six and a half, that, that's, six is the lowest. So, I mean, when you look at what they put into the game, I think they, I would call it a matter of them playing pretty much their best game. Oh, for sure. For, you know, for a long, for a long while. Um, I think the rating on Ethan Blackadder is 8.5. Yeah. There were two key moments for me in the first half. He was th front and center in both of them. Yeah. Should have done better. On the right-hand side, five meters out, slipped. Um, you know, great defense by the box. But that, was, for me, was a clear opportunity again. And at this and even, level, you have to take Yeah, yeah. And, and even more so, on the opposite side, five-meter channel, five meters out, that's all he had to do was catch and give to Caleb Clark, and that would have been another great engineered score by, by the All Blacks. So these, you know, this is... This is a big game experience, or lack thereof, in, in this instance. Yeah. But the fact is, the kid can play, you know? And he caused the box some problems. No, for sure. I mean, when I... It, look, it was, it was hard to analyze the game when you were watching, because it was just so oh, intense. It, it's, pay, it's paid at a million miles an hour. So, And the fact is that, you know, some of these stalemate type of games usually are, are, are controlled in the middle 30. But if you, if you look back at the game, it was end-to-end -end stuff, you know? They played in the right areas. There were some key turnovers, turnovers on both sides of the ball, you know, on their, on their line to relieve pressure. Mm. And both, both halfbacks did really well in clearing their lines and just transferring that pressure back onto you. You have to play. What have you got? Well, if you look at what John Smith... If you hear what John Smith said, no, said what did he, he say? He, he said that uh, there's two, you get two Bok debuts. One is playing for the box, and the other one's playing against the All Blacks. Yeah, yeah, and that's a great quote, huh? It really is, and, and you know, I think it's an enormous challenge for any any rugby player to 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 become a Bok. You know, the journey to become a Bok, but then the pressure is solely on to stay a Springbok, but also the biggest game is obviously against the All Blacks. And how you perform against the All Blacks, not only home, but away. That's the real measure of what gives you that greatness from a Bok point of view. And how would you rate Fassi and Sasha's performance? We said in the show that this was still an audition. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I thought Fassi was a little bit unlucky with that yellow card. Me too. Um, you know, Maybe we'll come on to the, the referee in interpretations a little bit later. But I, I, again, I think, he, I, th I, think he had a, I think he had a very solid game. He did nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. um, certainly in the second half from a counter-attacking perspective, you know, beautifully gone on the outside with a lovely little fade uh, and put that little, you know, worm ball through for Cheslin Kobe, which bounced out the touch, maybe the inside line. I always prefer the inside line. You know, it just keeps the ball in play. Damien Delende was there. So, you know, I, I, thought, he had a, I thought he had a fantastic game in, in the context of the disappointment in, in himself by, you know, being sent off for 10 minutes. Of course, yeah. then sometimes you come back in and you try a little bit too hard, but he was calm. Mm -hmm. you know, he's, 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 Didn't try and make up for it. No, mm -hmm. that's it. Sasha, you know, Again, I, I think in the big moments, he stood up. Yeah. 
you and I talked over the weekend about him being a force multiplier. What does that mean? Is that does he make people around him better? Still yet to see that. Mm. But the fact is that with 12 minutes to go, 10 points deficit, he stood up, was yeah. in charge, give me the ball, and his game management to close out that game was superb. Yeah. Probably the best force multiplier is Larry Bird. So maybe he should watch some Larry Bird. But, yeah. But look, he had a great game. Um, again, Steph the toy. It, you know, amazing really because... We've analysed so many uh, of his epic performances, and there are many, many, yeah. but usually from his position of wearing the number seven jersey, yeah. where he's slightly wider and he creates this chaos in the 15-metre channel. But even you know, in the boiler house, at lock with the four jersey on, geez, he did some work. You know, did everything that, the, the, that, a, that a second row needs to do, hit Brooks, you know, the pick and go, he was just immense again. Yeah. And just shows you that the versatility in the player, mm. you know, who is out and out breakaway, that gets put into the lock position and plays, you know, as a lock. It, 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 is, it is something mm. to behold, yeah. Yeah, I had one comment on uh, last week, I think, that said Peter Steph is so over overrated. How do you respond to that? I just, I couldn't. I just, man, seriously, yeah. you know, learn the game. He's so overrated. No, he's so he's so underrated. I mean, he just has the engine like you talked about an engine. That yeah, yeah, an inverted V V twelve W twelve as they call it. You know, yeah, it's yeah. just yeah it, the the performance the level of performances that he is doing in both in both of those jerseys as a breakaway and as a lock uh, are just incredible. They really are, and you know he he is leading by example. Mm -hmm. um, I dare say some of the others were not quite as impactful. No, I thought I thought Visa had a great game. Yeah, you know, I haven't played for a long time due to suspension. Um, he and Quacker were integral late on in the game with some key steals and turnovers. Um, yeah. Yep, immense. I, I thought he was great, especially with the time off. Now, Zell said something last week, which is kind of ironic when you think of it. He said that we were due for bad performance from the ref. Now, I think that we had the rub of the green again because the, everybody I, I, I chatted to in the, in the bar, you, me, the various Bach fans, all agreed that that was never a try. He had no control and it shouldn't have been a try. This is the bongy try. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I'm surprised that they didn't go for it. I mean, especially he didn't have a clear view. He had a clear view of what, what looked like the place and at the end of it, but I think he was short and he didn't have control of the ball um, when the try was given. Um, and, you know, you can negate that because look at the interception. You know, it was a bit of a sloppy play, and it's yeah. kind of, you've got to take the, the rubber of the green, haven't you? Yeah, uh, an interception thrown by Dixon, who, who, didn't, who didn't have a great game, let's be honest. Yeah, poor yeah. on the ratings. Three. Yeah. Mm, sheesh. That's, uh, you, I don't, well, you can get poor, but... Uh, it, I, I, that, that said, though, that said, when you concede 15 penalties, penalties like the All Blacks did, mm. you, don't give your, you don't give yourself the greatest of chances to, to win the game. And, and I think discipline overall is the, is, the, is, is the key difference here. Yeah. What, 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 is, what is unbelievable for me is, is that for 68 odd minutes, there was only one winner. To me. Well, I, I looked at the timeline and the clock. So, for, so on the 64th minute, the All Blacks were under the pump on their own line. They managed to secure a penalty. They clear their lines. They work themselves into an opportunity and then land themselves on the Bok try line to really close out yeah. and, and throttle this game. Game set. Man. And it was just one little lapse of judgment, reaction time, where Visa got, got his hands on the ball and turned over. And then suddenly, Sasha clears his lines. They win a line out. They build a game. He goes and pops it down in the corner, relieves the pressure, turns the pressure on the opposition and says, right, get out of here. And then, of course, that's when they started to ramp it up then. Yeah. No, that was... That was and, and, you know, no panic. No panic. You could see it. There was the body language which was calm. Communication was calm. 
They didn't need to get overzealous with the play. No. They just needed to stick to what they knew. And but, that was just, you know, a very strong carry game. Peter Steff was thick and fast and, you know, was, was just superb in that sense. And those that follow, have it followed uh, uh, wrestling, that's what I call the Hulk Hogan moment where the hand starts to go up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you can just ch feel the change in momentum. Yeah. yeah. So, and now we have Cape Town on Saturday. Yeah, and what happens? I mean, we don't know the health of the um, All Black squad. Mm. Uh, you'd imagine a couple of players are banged up because it was, you know, ferocious. Um, some key injuries for the Springboks. You could see that Sia had obviously something, something to do with his cheekbone, nose, that looks kind of serious. So he's definitely not going to be um, lining up this weekend. Um, so, yeah, it'll be intriguing to see if Rassi sticks to, you know, sticks to his, um, his mantra of rolling the dice again, you yes. know, and making some changes. You know, does Marnie come in and have a little, you know, uh, have a little opportunity? Um, so I, I do think now the pressure is on the All Blacks again to, like, shake it off. They, they did everything in their powers. Yeah to get that win, but they just couldn't hold on to it. No. You know, they, they, it slipped through their fingers because the fact is that they didn't stop playing. They were just so ill-disciplined. And of course, on the 69th minute yellow card, you have one, you know, you have your New, Ze your New Zealand relievers coming on and Tonga Fassi gets t binned with on the 69th minute and you could just see that the body language then suddenly sways. To, yeah. to the box so very well deserved victory yeah contextually <clears throat> because as you say at the hour mark the all blacks were in the driving seat yeah for sure but, uh, but uh, for good news for those who followed us on betting we predicted that it would be over 48 and a half we said and we said that that would you said better the week mm. um, we predicted that uh, that the all blacks would cover seven and a half put that bet on early in the week and I also said the box would win. So, you know, I know the people out there are going to remind me about my, the, one, the one I got wrong in, uh, against the island. But, uh. No, but I mean, three for three. I mean, this is, you know, this is your insight, isn't it? This is something that you understand and that you like and you inform correctly, yeah. um, not only with your heart, but with your head. Mm -hmm, usually. Yeah. yeah. No, well, I only bet against teams that I like. Just. But I suppose the, 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 the difference is, um, you know, with so many changes and people slotting in is that there's still a level of comfort and understanding as to what your job is, who does what, when. Um, and I think that's the pleasing thing for, for Rassi, mm. is that his, his, his main men turned up when the pressure was on. And, you know, it, it looked a certainty that... 10 points down, 27 to 7 with 12 to go, that the All Blacks were going to cruise to the final whistle. Yeah, for and sure. And yet they didn't. And that's just a hallmark again of a classy side, isn't it? You know, For sure. It, it is, Scott. And, you know, we're, we're in territory now where if the, if the box can beat the All Blacks on Saturday, it'll be four in a row and six out of eight. Yeah, yeah and then we're, we're starting to go into unprecedented territory for now. For sure, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, um, five wins out of seven against the All Blacks, which is the team you measure yeah. yourself against. And I, I liked I liked Rassi's honesty after the game because I think he covered two topics. It's about, you know, don't uh, you can question my selection, but I'm just I want to get eyeballs on as many players as I have in the squad that are available to me and what I think are going to create great chemistry for us as a as a Springbok nation. Yeah. And he said, yes, we're going to lose some games, and he's happy to do that through experimenting. Yeah. But the fact is. On the pitch, mm. the players are unrelenting when it comes to that. They, they don't want to lose. Yeah. You can see that. Yeah, for sure. And, and that's you, where they rally for each other. And to me, the, 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 the difference in the game was, was, was the bench. I mean, when the, when the Bach bench came on, yeah, their, their yeah. contribution was amazing. I, I, you know, the era is over now. It's, it's, you, know, okay. it's, uh, you know, it showed. We've seen enough of a sample size of... Sasha's ability and his chops as a rugby player. We've seen enough of Fassi. Yeah. And I dare say we'll see some other changes this week emerge. 
from Rassi because, mm-hmm. you know, they still got another test match. Yeah. Argentina. And then the, the, and then the Orton tour. So, you know, there's plenty of rugby ahead. And also, I'd be mindful of, you know, dialing back the minutes from Eben and Peter Steff. You know, you know what they're capable. It's about managing their their health going forward. But and this far out from the World Cup, you know, I, I think that we, we're looking at a situation where the box are astronomical favorites to win the uh, this championship. Yeah. You, you, uh, and, you know, it's hard... Uh, Looking at the, the box performance, how, how do they stay humble? Because, my well, God, there's a lot to celebrate. Yeah, it is, yeah. But, I mean, you know, that's down to the temperament of the management and, you know, not getting ahead of yourself. Always there's room for improvement. Yeah. The fact is the composure and the control provided that assurance to all the box supporters on Saturday that, yeah, you can put us under pressure, but, you know, we know what we're doing, so I, I think we'll see. I think we'll see some selection surprises again by Rassi this week. Yeah, so I've no doubt. Yeah, I've no doubt. And like you said, it is a twenty-three man uh, squad. Selections are key, but I, I just feel, and I'm not making any predictions until I've seen the teams. Mm. But uh, the pressure now is is on the All Blacks. To yeah. avoid the four straight defeat to, to, to the Yeah, ball. and also, you know, backing up that fine performance from the All Blacks on Saturday is is not easy, you know? No. It's not easy. Um, you know, conditions will be different underfoot in Cape Town, you know. They've never played at that stadium? Yeah, new, new stadium for, for them. Um, you know, they, they, does Razor look at doing some fine-tuning to his team because I think there's clearly some noise off the field on the other side of the Indian Ocean about, you know, some players under under scrutiny. Yeah. Um, I feel that he'll, he'll, he'll stick to much of the same. Um, but, let, let, yeah, let's see, how the, let's see how the names and the configuration play out this week before we go into the betting and the outcome. Yeah, yeah. wise words. Yeah. Wise words. Anyway, what a great, what a great performance. Um, like you said, a million miles an hour. Uh, I'm definitely going to have to watch the game again just to watch Yeah, it, pl- the you know, plenty of jeopardy. It, it, it wasn't, the, it wasn't the, the complete performance by either side, but the fact is it created tension. You know, there were elements of controversy, um, but it was played in a great spirit and, you know. Yeah. So the, the box are just becoming very difficult to pin down, you know, to really get across that line. And you have to be thinking of playing for 85 plus minutes now. Because in normal, you know, in normal test match football, at that 62, 64, 65 minute, you were 10 points ahead. You, you kind of, you drill that home. You bring that home, baby. Uh, and, uh, and all blacks of old, maybe, a different vintage, would have had more surgical control as to where they are. On it. But it took an enormous effort. And it was not luck. It was all about managing expectations, managing field possession. Yeah. You know, field position, pressure, gives you game-winning opportunities. Well, the only time, and, and you know, this is no slight against the Springboks, but in 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 history, my my what I've been watching, the All Blacks were capable of coming from ten down. Yeah, you know, so for the box to do that, yeah, maybe it's a, a sign of uh, a sign of the times. Well, it's a sign of you know building resilience, getting comfortable with being uncomfortable, uh, and that's exactly you know that's that's. That's what these group of guys are about. It's not only just the players and their application and attitude. It's not only the management and the, the coaches, the support staff, you know, the medical team. They're all playing a huge part in this kind of machine that is the box mm, um, yeah. to keep them, you know, right on the edge. Not over the edge, but right on the edge to deliver these type of performances. 
Well, we've got so much to look forward to this week, um, and uh, I'm glad I can share it with you, Matt. It's been great having you here. Yeah, my uh, my last week in the Western Cape, so let's finish on a high. Um, I think it will be another great test match from these two these two nations. Yeah. Um, you know, from from the early part of June and the arrival of the Irish to the sh- shores, everyone was talking back then about the Cape Town test. Mm-hmm. It's been hugely oversubscribed. It's Huge. the hottest ticket in town. It is. And, you know, it's been teed up now yes. by that, you know, last 10 minute revival from the box. So, uh, you know, fireworks expected on Saturday. It's like a Netflix series that you just, you know, you want to binge watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Can't wait. Anyway, thanks, Scotty, and uh, we'll chat later in the week.